Well, hello and welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament, and we're reading Luke's Gospel, chapter, beginning of chapter 2. This is the birth of Jesus, which is also recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Most of the stories in this chapter are in fact only in Luke's Gospel. So, Egenito de en tais hemerai sekenai sexelthen dogma parakaisaros ai gustu apographes thy pasanten oi komenen. And it came to pass in those days a dogma, now this here has the sense of a decree, it is connected with dokio. Um, and doke, it seems good. The dogma here is an order or a decree. It went out from Caesarus Augustus, from Caesar Augustus, for the whole of the Oikumene, the whole of the inhabited world. This uh, Oikumene becomes a technical word, really, at this point of time. Uh, it's just a participle from Oikio, but it comes to mean the inhabited world. Uh, that which was controlled by Rome. Apographestai uh, is probably passive here, uh, so for the whole of the inhabited world to be registered. Uh, An apographe, which word I think we get in the next line here, the cognate noun uh, means an enrollment, and um, the, the noun only appears in Luke. The it's odd that there's no mention of such a census elsewhere in um, other surviving writings from the period um, and one's not quite sure how historically accurate this is in fact in the current context. Haute um, apographe prote agenito hegomenuontos te surias kai kureniu and this um, was the first apographe, the first enrolment. Um, this first enrolment took place perhaps for the agenito, and um, we get a genitive absolute. So, um, he, hegemonuo uh, is to, um, to rule, but here to be a governor. Uh, so, uh, the Syria Cyrene. Now, this is some um, uh, Quirinius is really uh, a Greek attempt to put Quirinius as the governor. So, Quirinius being governor of Syria. Now, again, there's difficulties here because Quirinius was in fact governor about six years after this time from about 6 AD. So if Jesus was born in about uh, 3 BC, as some people think, then this is uh, historically well out of kilter. Uh, Luke doesn't always get the details correct with this. Um, it's interesting that he even mentions this here when it doesn't appear to be um, in any other gospel and it doesn't appear to be uh, historically accurate. Anyway, so you can look up the commentaries on this point. Um, and eporuon to pantes apographestai hekastos es ten hiatu polin. And all went to be enrolled. Uh, this is again probably passive here. Some people think it's middle to enroll themselves. Uh, each one to his own city. Anebe de Kai Yosef Apotes Galileas ek polios Nazaret es ten Iudayan es polin David hetis kaletai Bethlehem. Dioto enai auton ex oiku tes patrias David. And Joseph Anebe from Anabino, he went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city, this will be a genitive of David. Now we get this correct use of the hatis here. Um, 
the indefinite with the article. It's the very one which is. So you can just translate it as a, a relative pronoun. So which is called Bethlehem. But it's meant to be slightly emphatic here. The very one which is called Bethlehem. Dia to ani auton. Now we get dia to plus the infinitive on account of. So because he was ek oiku from the house kai patrias David and the family or the descendants of David from the family of David. So he claims descendants descendants from David. Uh, apo uh, grapsasthai sun mariam te emnes jumene auto. Uh, to be enrolled, and this, or perhaps to enroll himself, it's not clear whether it's middle or passive here, it's middle in form. So perhaps to enroll himself with Mary, the one being betrothed to him. Use enkuo, in, uh, this is a dative, um, in opposition to Mary, uh, she being enkuo pregnant. Egeneto de en to enai autus eke eplestes en hai hamra tu ten. And it came to pass, and we get another of these um, articular infinitives, Luke's very fond of these, but uh, so is the Septuagint. So it came to pass that while they were there, so you put the subject of the infinitive into the accusative here in this construction. So while they were there, um, yeah, while they were there, Eplethes son, again, uh, this is a um, Old Testament um, trope here, uh, Old Testament idiom, that literally the days of her to give birth were fulfilled, were filled up. So we would say it came time for her to give birth. Kai eteken, this again from this tekane and eteken from tikto, this is the aorist, uh, and she gave birth to this to um, her son, ton prototokon, the firstborn. Again, we get this tikto root. We get a vowel gradation. The tok here from tik tikto tek. Um, Texami in the future, and the root is this tick or tock with a vowel gradation. Uh, and kai uh, es sparganos in auton, kai anaclean in auton in fatne, di hoti uk ein autois topos in to catalumati. This is a this verb here is um, an Omicron contract verb, it's sparganoo is the verb, it means to wrap in uh, baby clothes, to wrap in swaddling clothes was the old translation I think. Uh, so they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they uh, laid him down, it's, it's actually Anna, so they reclined him, caused him to recline, they laid him down in fatne in a manger. This is a food stall for animals, in fact, dioti uk ein autois topos, for there was not a place for them in to catalumati. A cataluma is an inn. It's a fairly old word, in fact. Uh, yep, so there was, because there was no place for them in the inn, the cataluma. Uh, well. Kai poimenes esen en te cora te aute agraluntes kai fulasontes fulacas tes nuctos epiten poimen auton. And there were poimenes, from poimen is the nominative, this is the, there were shepherds in the, the place, in that very place. Now we get uh, te with the uh, our tay with the article means the same. So in that same place or in that very place we could translate it as ente corote arte and the agroluntes this is from um, agroleo it is the verb it's an epsilon contract verb it, it means to live um, in the open to live in agros to um, 
so to live outdoors the the verb is quite late the there is an adjective which is from this which is a good classical word but um, the verb itself is quite late and it's only here in the New Testament so there were shepherds in that very same place living outdoors and through Lasson test guarding a guard so we say keeping watch but the Greek likes to use a verb plus the cognate noun just as Hebrew often does uh, and they were keeping guard, they were keeping watch, tes, nuktos, during the night, genitive of time during which, epi tan poimne, over the flock. So we get poimen, which is a third declension now in the shepherd, and here we get poimne, first declension noun for the flock, over their flock, our tone. Kai angelos kuriu apeste autois, kai doxa kuriu. Peri lumps in autus, kai ephobetes an phobon megan, and an angel of. And again, we get kurios without the article, so I generally think it's best to translate it as Yahweh. So the angel of Yahweh stood uh, upon them. Not quite clear what the epi uh, stood over them. Uh, kai doxa and the glory of kuriu of Yahweh. This must be uh, recalling the, the Shekinah glory from the Hebrew word. So the glory of God, peri elamps and autus, shone around them. Kai ephobethes an phobon megan, and they feared a great fear. Again, very, it's very Septuagint language. It's very, um, uh, with this repetition of verb and cognate noun. Kai epinautois ho angelos, and the angel said to them, Me phobeste, do not fear, iduga euangelizdomai, humin karan megalain, hertis estai pantito lao. Uh, so the angel said to them, Do not fear, be, for behold, uh, I proclaim um, good news, um, I proclaim uh, a great current joy um, to you and again we get this use of hatis here um, uh, which will be the very thing which will be uh, sorry no it's a I'm sorry the object of this one is here isn't it well no it can't because it's s die isn't it so it's going to take the same case so I proclaim to you a great joy which will be for all the people uh, that's what the grammar must be there the the, the Quran must go as an, an object of this into the accusative so I proclaim good news to you great joy which will be for all the laos all the people hoti etekthe whom in semeron sorter hosest in Christos kurios en pole david because Semeron today, this same word survives into modern Greek, uh, etekthe, uh, this is, um, well, the subject of this is here, a saviour uh, has been born for you. So etekthe, again from Ticto, this is the aorist passive from Ticto. So today a saviour has been born for you, Hos, who is... Christos, the Messiah, Kurios, well, Yahweh, or the Lord, in the city of David. Kaituto humin tosemeon, and this is the sign for you. Huresete, future from Hurisco, you will find a brephos. Brephos can be used as an unborn child and also a young baby. Uh, so it's here, it's a brephos, a young baby. Uh, esparagonomenon this is the perfect passive participle from that verb we had before this, uh, the spargenoo uh, having been put into swaddling clothes so having been um, uh, dressed in children babies clothes kai kaimenon and lying in fatne and lying in a manger 
kai ex hyphnes agenitos sunto angulo plethos stratias uraniu ainun ton ton theon kai legonton. And suddenly it took place, or there was, with the angel, a plethos, a multitude uh, of the army of heaven. Um, and then uh, it's uh, constructio ad sensum here because th this is a singular subject, but now we get plural participles. Um, because presumably because there's this army, this plethos is a plural in sense, and so they've gone to a plural here. Of them praising from Aineo, praising God and saying, Doxa in hupsistois theo, glory in the highest place, uh, to, to God upsistois in the highest places, kai epigeis irene in anthropos eudokias. Um, Eudokia is a word meaning a goodwill or favour, uh, and this is a genitive here. So, in peace upon earth, among men of goodwill, here I think, of among men of goodwill. Kai egenito hos apelthon ap auton eston of unon hoi angeloi. Hoi pomenes elalun pros olelus dia lo di elthomen de hios Bethlehem kaidomen to rema tuta to gegenos hot hokurios egnorisen hemin. And it came to pass that when the angels, the subjects down here, Abaelthen departed from them as tonunon into the heaven. Hoi poi menes, the, um, the shepherds, elalun, imperfect, began to say to one another, and this is what they say, dielthomen, hortatory subjunctive here from de erkami, let us continue on. Uh, in fact, heos as far as Bethlehem. Kai idomen, and let us see this rema. Now it's either thing or word, Probably thing here, this word rhema originally meant that which is said, and hence a word, but because of its usage in the Septuagint can mean a, a thing or a word. Here I think it must mean thing by what's coming up next. Um, this thing, the one having taken place. Now this is a neuter perfect participle agreeing with rhema. The thing having taken place, hot which... Hokurios ignorisen hemin, which, now here we do get the article, which the Lord has made known to us. This is from Gnorisdo. Kai Elthan, notice we're getting these weak aorist endings here, which is typical in the, um, uh, in the, the New Testament, and they came, Spusantes, from Spudo, ha making haste, and you run this is from um, yeah uh, from Anna plus Hurisco with a weak heiress that normally be Huron but they've got a weak heiress ending here um, and they found uh, Mary and Joseph and the Brephos the baby lying in the manger Idontes de Ignorisan peri to Ramatos to Melethentos autos peri to paiviu tutu, and having seen them, they made known um, regarding. Now, this must be the word here because it's of the participle here. The word, the one having been spoken. This is an aorist passive participle from Malio, having been spoken autos to them peri to paiviu tutu regarding this child. Caipantes hoi acusantes ethalmus and periton melethenton hupaton poimenon prosautus. And all those hearing um, were amazed um, regarding the things having been spoken. So again, we get a, 
a perfect, sorry, we get an aorist um, participle, aorist passive participle, genitive plural, the things having been said by the shepherds cross our to them. Hed mariam panta sunetere taremata tauta sum balusa in te cardia autes. And Mary, this is an interesting verb here, it occurs also in the Septuagint in similar contexts where generally it's, um, well, it can be a man or a woman who notices something very odd and strange and stores them up in their, in their heart. It's from Sunterio. It's got the sense of storing away or, you know, putting away into, in, the, in, the, in their mind. So Mary stored up all these things or possibly words, sum balusa, uh, putting them into her heart. Uh, yeah, but yes, putting them together into her heart. So, um, kai hope uh, strepsan hoi poimen is doxat zontes kai ainuntes tontheon epi pasin hois ekusin kai edon kathos elelethe prosautus. So Mary stood all these things up, placing them in her heart, and um, the shepherds, Hupastrepho, they returned, doxantes, part of doxasdo, glorifying and praising God, epipassin, uh, well something like in regard to, epi can often have that meaning with the dative here, in regard to all the things, hois, which they heard, and it's been attracted into the uh, dative by attraction here with its antecedent. Normally it takes its case from its own clause, but you often get it attracted back into its the case of the antecedent. So glorifying and praising God at, in regard to all the things which they heard and they saw, cathos, just as it was said to them. Again, we get aorist passive from Lalio. Kai hoti eplethes en hemerai octo tu peritem men, auton kai eclethe to onoma auto Jesus, to clethen hupa tu euangelu pro tu sun lefthenai auton en te koilia. And when the uh, eight days had been completed, had been filled up, so when eight days had, we'd say, had passed, uh, so as to circumcise him, from peritemno, it's the aorist infinitive here, strong aorist infinitive, from peritemno to circumcise. Uh, so when we, we would say when eight, eight days had passed, so as uh, for him, so there was the need for him to be circumcised, and his name, Ecclethe, aorist passive, was called Jesus, Jesus, which uh, sort of Joshua, Yeshua, meaning saviour. Um, Toklethen, the thing having been called, the name having been called, so the top will agree with the onoma. Klethen is the aorist passive participle neuter. So the thing which had been called by the angel, so the name which had been uh, called by the angel, or perhaps spoken by the angel, pro to sul um, lefthenai. Aorist passive infinitive from sul lambano with the meaning of to become pregnant. Uh, here it's more in the sense of before he was conceived. In te koilia, in the womb. And that's the first 21 verses.